Hi, right, welcome to another episode of the Live Cost Construction Experience. Delighted to say now I'm joined by former Ireland Lancer Rugby Captain Jamie Heaslip. Jamie, welcome to the Live Cost Construction Experience. How are you? I'm good. I'm very good, yeah. Um, I think like everyone else, um, you know, we're in a bit of a, a, a roller coaster um, and we... Uh, we, it's a bit, it's a bit scary because we just don't know when this roller coaster is going to end. But um, I think, like everyone else, uh, we're just trying to put one foot in front of the other and and make our way through it. Yeah, I mean, how is what's the impact being on yourself, sort of personally? Is is would you have worked much from home anyway? Um, yeah, most most mornings I I tend to work from home and. Um, you know, this is kind of an extension of that, but I, I did like to meet a lot of people post, you know, after lunch and yeah. I, I tended to meet a lot of people, but obviously that's kind of gone and it's just not, you know, as as good as uh, interactions like this and, and webinars and stuff are, it's still not the same as having a coffee with someone, you know, yeah, um, and definitely. I think everyone misses that human touch. But um, look, you know, I get to see a wide range of um, businesses across my kind of portfolio businesses that I'm involved in um, as a kind of investor, I suppose. Yeah. And um, it, it's it's interesting to see how different people in different verticals are uh, approaching the, the challenge. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because you're involved in a couple of pubs and restaurants as, as well as well. I'd imagine that's you've had a pretty poor effect on, on, yeah. on, on businesses. <laughs> that's an understatement. Yeah. Um, we're, we're um yeah like I'm, I'm i'm not in the restaurant world more i left that a couple of years ago but um yeah i have two pubs and you know on a sunday morning um you know we had to kind of bring all the staff together and and kind of let them go uh 70 staff across two pubs you know um something like i think it's fifty thousand people directly across i think there's seven thousand pubs in ireland um so yeah, it's uh, a lot of people directly and obviously indirectly um, affected. But, um, you know, we we kind of try to approach it very matter of factly and, and see how we can um, you know, fight it out, hopefully, and be able to reinstate all those people back to uh, their old jobs when we come out the other side. Yeah, I mean, hopefully so. I mean, I suppose just to give, give you a bit of context around this one, uh, general listener base would be construction business owners. Um operators stuff like that who would a lot of these guys would be dealing with a hell of a lot of uncertainty at the time i just want to roll roll you back a couple of years if you don't mind um i think you're about 34 you're sitting on somewhere around 95 caps or something you're warming up against england <laughs> and i mean <laughs> nearly 100 caps as well as if, 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 if you bring the lines into the equation but i suppose you've got your sights on a world cup as well coming up and then bang this freak injury happens i mean can you explain that? Because I'm trying to drag parallels into the, the bang that some of our listener base will have taken over the last couple of weeks. And I mean, what? how did you navigate that situation? Well, everything was, you know, I had a plan and everything was quite certain. And, you know, you, you could argue that it was my business plan where, you know, I, I had a contract that technically wasn't meant to run until run out until the end of this season. Yeah. Um, and then I was going to potentially, uh, you know, look at options abroad or something like that just for the year, you know. Um, so I'd kind of given myself till the end of basically 2021 to um, kind of have a plan in place. And I kind of had an idea where I wanted to get to. But, you know, the, the, that time frame of, of then to now was very much uh, formulating that, those ideas that I had. But literally in, you know, the space of a minute, that all changes. You know what I mean? Um, I didn't know it at the time. And it, it, it evolved over a 12 month period where I came to the, the, the end point where I had to finish because of injury. Um, yeah, it basically tore up the plan that you had and I had to adapt and constantly adapt as well um, for various other different th- factors that have come into it. And I, I think it's that that um, that ability to adapt and move forward is very, very important. Um, not just in sport. In sport, for example, you can get, you can be like take Ireland, you know, Ireland get to number one in the world in 2019 and they're very, very quickly um, 
you know, they get knocked out in the quarterfinal and, and they kind of on a bit of a downward slope for a little bit. And you're kind of going, well, how did, how, how did that happen? And, and everything can change very, very quickly because it's you get to the top and if you don't evolve your business or evolve the way you're playing, everyone else catches up and then they pass you out with the competitive advantage, you know? And so you got to evolve and, and move forward um, or adapt and move forward. And the same with what I had to do. I got injured. Um, I'm no longer a rugby player. Okay, and um, this is two or three years quicker than I would have uh, that I had planned. You know, I had a contract, all that sort of thing. And um, within a month, I had no contract of when I kind of announced I got was retiring, and um, you know, it ends all very quickly. You just have to move forward. You kind of make a plan, adapt it. Um, you come to different forks in a road, and and you kind of have to weigh it, weigh it up, and depending on on where you are. So, um, if if you stay very fixed in your mindset, I think that's where you get yourself in trouble. And I think a lot of uh, businesses and and owners uh, and people involved in different industries are seeing that right now. Yeah, I mean, you you had a couple of things in in the in the pipeline, didn't you? Just before that, I mean, you you as you say, you were involved in a couple of investments, so you you were diversifying as well as early. It wasn't a, a complete rug pull from underneath you, was it? Um, no, but like, like anything, I, I didn't know which ones I wanted to go into more so or not, or, you know what I mean? Um, or where, what role would I play in them? And I'm still figuring that out. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I came out of playing, I took about nine months of doing nothing. Um, you know, they say you do, you do the three most stressful things. The three most stressful things you can do in your life are, uh, have a child, move house and start a new career. And I did all three in nine months. It was, it was a stressful period, 2018, where, you know, we moved house, we had it, had our first child. And then I started working full time for Google in December, 2018. Um, and I, mean, I spent how, just over a year. How was that, Jamie? I mean, just, just to dive in on, on that point, which is how have you found going from professional sports into business and especially someone like Google, which would have been a brilliant in, in introduction in there. Uh, how, how have you found that like dealing with people? I mean, I suppose sports athletes and I suppose what I'm trying to get to is would have similar mindsets. Okay. So some guys would be better professionals than others, but similar mindsets in, in terms of what needs to get done. Business is quite different. Uh, how, how have you found that? Yeah, very. Um, well, like I'll give you Google as an example. Like I would literally, Google's on in, on Barrow Street and I, I live about a 10, 15 minute walk away and I would literally walk to work. I'd be walking, there'd be kids going to school, they'd be going, oh, hey, Jamie, the odd time getting a picture, they'd be uh, odd time asking, you know, if there's big games on, asking about the big games, what I thought, right? So they kind of know you for what you did. Mm -hmm. Then I would literally walk into Google um, and like, I think it's 70, 80% 80 of the workforce here in Ireland are not Irish, Right. They didn't have, majority of people didn't have a clue what I did, didn't even know who I was. And most people referred to me as James because on my, my Google pass was down as James, which is yeah. my name of my passport. So it was like James by day, Jamie by night. <laughs> and I re literally had to check my ego at the door of Google. Um, but it was really good because um, it allowed me get in there, remove that um, whatever kind of air was around that former career and learn the processes and ways of what one of the most valuable companies in the world, how they operate. Um, uh, I'm never saying I'm never going to go back to a company, uh, a big, a big company like that. Um, I just always had the urge to always be involved in a smaller company or company that I had more of a, uh, stake in. And that's why while playing, I kind of knew that. And that's why I, I, um, invested in in different businesses of things that i had different interests in and um, and I'm, I'm trying to see which ones i want to spend most of my time with and uh, right now i'm currently spending a lot of time with flender but you know going forward that you know will probably change for me at, at some stage and um you know i'm just trying to kind of learn different parts from the different businesses and, and seeing which one I want to kind of end up spending most of my time. In. And also, you know, the different partnerships that you have in place with these, these companies, um, you know, see if you can make the most out of it. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I want to talk about leadership. Uh, a lot of, again, I've touched on our listener base. A lot of our guys will be tend to be getting looked up to now for leadership. They're the business owner, they're the business operator. Things aren't going well. They, a lot of the staff, a lot of the partners would be looking to these people now to lead 
I suppose. Um, I think it was 2013, yeah. you were named captain of Ireland, taking over from Brian O'Driscoll and before him, Paul O'Connell, with two big, big names. I mean, what's going through your head when you get the news, now it's time to lead? I mean, what can you remember the feeling and do you remember what the mindset was? Um, yeah, I remember thinking, like, <clears throat> you know, what, what kind of leader do you want to be? Do you be a, a guy that is great at giving speeches and motivating? Do you want to be a guy that leads by actions? You know, kind of establishing the kind of leader that you want to be. Um, and I kind of decided that I wanted to be a guy that spoke through actions. And um, that's kind of how I tried to lead, I suppose. And, and then also bring through that core leadership group and that that collective of, of individuals who were there. Because at the time, it was actually quite a young team. And um, a lot of senior figures who had been there in the past had either were injured or gone. And... Um, you know, you had to try and bring that group through. While also, you got to remember, Brian was actually still in the team, and um, so you know, yeah, you, you had to kind of <clears throat> deal with that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it, like, it, it, there was there was challenges along the way because you know, um, we were a young group, um, and and you know, we had a tough tough season. Um, but I think the lessons we took from that season definitely stood to them going forward. You know, the, the following two years after that, we, we ended up winning um, the Six Nations doing a double, which we haven't been able to do since and never did before that. Um, and uh, I, I think it stood to the team and, and a lot of foundations there built, the later foundation for them to get to, to number one in the world. But it was, it was a, definitely a challenge because there was highs and lows of that year. Um, and uh, but like anything, you try and stay the course. You know, you, you don't try and get too carried away with the with the bad stuff or too carried away with the good stuff. You try and focus on where you want to get to, and 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 work towards that and stay in the middle of the road uh, somewhat along the way. Yeah, I mean, what parallels do you see that between business leaders and say sporting leaders that you've you've had experience with working with both now? Is is there parallels between two? Yeah, I mean, you, 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 well, like, like anything, um, you get a lot of, you know, a lot of it is set by the style and tone, um, from the top down, but it's also very important to get uh, buy-in from the bottom up. So, um, you know, you need your leaders to, to really live the values and the culture of of what the company is about, uh, in order to get buy in from everyone else, um, and that's very very important. And I always see that the strong leaders and strong companies are the ones that really live by their values. Um, you don't have to you don't have to be stringent on them. Um, as such, and what I mean by that is, you know, you have to show flexibility in term, right now. I mean, you know, if you're a, a, a company that uh, I'll give an example like. For some reason, Fruit People is a company that's in my head right now. They um, they were purely, uh, you know, office uh, company based fruit delivery company. They deliver fruit to different offices around around the country, and they had no uh, plans or ambitions of going into uh, you know residential uh, world and going after the normal consumer. This whole thing kicks off. Everyone's working from home and they pivoted completely into that world. Yeah. We're seeing that time and time again with restaurants. There's Michelin star restaurants that, um, you know, refuse to even take online bookings. You had yeah. to phone up, you know what I mean? And they only opened up the reservation book once a quarter. Um, and now they're doing online delivery or online call and collect. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's amazing. It's, um, when, when it's everyone, everyone has it. Yeah, in, in, in times of uncertainty, the, the innovation that, that can spring out from this, I was just, I was on a webinar this morning on a training and looking back at the list of companies that sprung up from the last recession, the last downturn, like the likes of Uber and Airbnb and Slack and WhatsApp, like they, when the mind starts to have time to think, it's amazing what, what can happen. Um, and I, I, I think there will be some huge innovation springing up from this. Um, personal question. Let me just bring you back to leadership. Who was the, who was the best then? Who was the best leader that you played under? Oh, so uh, in terms of captaincy, Paul yeah. Connell, hands down. Um, he he's he's um, as well as being a fantastic player, leading by example. Um, he had just really good emotional intelligence in terms of really understanding people, understanding the collective, uh, and being able to. Um, kind of channel that at all times and really kind of have his finger on the pulse in that regard 
uh, and be able to communicate it as well um, was 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 quite inspiring as well as just being a guy that led by example in terms of playing and how you be a pro as well you know um, yeah and he's just a generally good guy off the field yeah I mean is there a bit of advice that you would offer a small business who's struggling with this current situation in terms of having to sort of step up into that leadership role I mean, look, some hard decisions are going to have to be made and have been made over the last while. Um, you know, and some businesses are going to find it hard to come out of this. Um, yeah. You know, so, and, and some businesses are are not affected or some businesses are even, are even thriving um, through this. You know what I mean? Depending on what sector or vertical or what you do. Um, but it, it's very much a difficult time. I think you have to have some sort of plan in place, a short, medium, long-term plan in place. You need to um, identify kind of what is essential to now and then also not be fixed to that plan then at the same time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of have some sort of direction you want to go, start moving towards it. Okay, if you have to adapt, adapt. You know what I mean? Um you know, uh, for example, the pubs, you know, in the pubs, we were like very quickly like, OK, you know, doors are closed, no revenue coming in. OK, how do we uh, what's our biggest cost? Uh, you know, how do we manage that? Um, OK, supplies, you know, how do we manage that? If you're doing food, a lot of perishables, how do you manage that? Uh, OK, rates. Yeah. Subscriptions. Yeah. How, you know what I mean? You start working your way through all this stuff yeah. Um you eventually get through all that and and then you try and figure out okay how am i going to come out of this and um, because you because there will be another side of this and mm-hmm. um, we don't know when and that's probably the, that's probably the thing that people are struggling the most with the fact that um it, the uncertainty you know what i mean um, and i always love the two philosophies you know joe schmidt con- coached under this um philosophy of control the controllables which is very, which is all about you know, looking after what you can control, your own processes, how you prep, the work you put in and how you uh, and what you do. And um, I always really, really liked that. But then I also loved Stuart Lancaster's um, philosophy, which kind of built on top of that, which was comfortable in chaos. And he was like, well, you can be really good in all your processes. There is a chaotic element to business. There's a chaotic element to to sport, you know, and you have to be comfortable in that scenario um and in sport it was very easy to create those type of scenarios in training you know what i mean yeah. and you try and work your way through it um in business i tell you right now you're you couldn't be in a more chaotic environment but you just try and work your way through it uh, it's not easy it's not perfect um you know and like i said there's going to be a lot of casualties along the way yeah and i would think we opened up our first business around 25 26 i spent but nine years out in Australia and one of the very early mentors we had uh, one of the first pieces of advice he gave me was just get comfortable being uncomfortable this never gets easy so one of I've had that embedded in my own set of values is like this is just a, it's a it's a constant battle and never gets easy so I mean that's definitely something that I've had for, uh, from day one and that's good I definitely want to push on to, to Flender you mentioned Flender earlier on for those who don't know can you explain what Flender is and uh, a quick snapshot on what peer-to-peer lending is and how it works. Yeah, well, essentially, I am um, like I, I basically partnered up with Flender in 2017, um, and you know. Uh, basically, like you said, they're a digital lending platform um, and they do it through institutional lending and retail lending. Uh, you know, retail lending is, is like you said, is, is, you know, you or I can put money on the platform. We have different businesses come to us and um, uh, look for, you know, well, amounts up to 300,000 euro. Um, and, you know, we either put them on the retail lending platform for you and I can put money on the platform and lend to these businesses, or we can go through the institutional lending channel as well. Um, That's the marketplace, Jamie. Which it? doesn't come the marketplace is the retail lending, yeah. which is the peer-to-peer space. Um, and, uh, yeah, so basically we, what we're trying to do is provide an alternative uh, option to uh, businesses for financing, you know, um, and speed is is where we trump yeah, um, okay. Pillar Banks, you know, Pillar Banks, I mean, Ismay put a study together there or did a review of Q4 and the average length of time for a bank to come back to you on a yes or no is 
four to six weeks when you're applying for an SME, applying for a loan. And then the, it took on average two weeks for you to draw down on that. If you come to Flender, uh, we can, we have the ability to give you an answer probably today, if not in the next 24 hours. And if that's a yes, um, have the ability to get those funds to you within 24 hours. Oh, um, you know, it's, it's, it's huge, particularly now when, when, when speed is, um, time is not our friend um, in terms of waiting, being, having to wait anywhere from six to eight weeks right now to get a, to get a, a yes, firstly, or even worse, a slow no. Um, for an SME right now, you, you can't be living in those kind of terms. Yeah. You need to move a lot quicker. Um, and like I said, it's a, it's a company that I, I've been involved in 2017 and, and um, you know, I thought I would spend a bit more time on. I'm still spending time, obviously, across all the other different businesses, but I spend a little bit more time here now just even to learn more about it and have more interaction with because they see so many different uh, industries. You know, our top categories are, you know, our top five are, if I remember, like transport logistics, uh, engineering, uh, industrial services, construction, um, manufacturing and technology. That would kind of make up the top five um, kind of industries that we're, that we're involved in. I, I, uh, I noticed that on, on the website as well, that there was a fair bit of construction activity on there. I mean, would a construction company be approved if they're looking for some cash to use as working capital on a like let's say they had a, a current project that was running and obviously cash oh, is, yeah, is going to be impacted working capital is is one of the biggest ones that that we that that people are getting in touch with us for um you know you have working capital uh you have you know you, you feel a lot of people actually strangely coming to us for um, to be able to enable their staff to be able to work from home and getting them the right equipment and facilities yeah. to work at home. You have people who are pivoting into, um, they might not have had delivery services or online services beforehand, pivoting into that. Uh, working capital, like we touched on as, as well, contingency funds. A lot of people getting in touch with us right now for contingency funds going forward as well. Um, so a multitude of different reasons uh, of, of people reaching out to us. You know, there's a very simple process of what you go through and, and the criteria that we look for. Um, and I say, all in all, if you had everything in line in terms of your up-to-date accounts and, and um, tax certs and stuff like that, you know, the process of applying would take you less than five minutes. Um, it, 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 it's that quick, you know, and it's all done online, end-to-end -end digital. Um, and, and it's, you know, like I said, we're trying to be able to, to, to provide that alternative um, to banks. And then as a group, on a, as a side note, it's really been really interesting because we've, um, you know, we've come together with the other fintech providers and, and non-pillar bank lenders in Ireland under the umbrella of um, Irish finance providers uh, of Ireland. And um, we're actually lobbying now with the government to, to be able to deploy the funds that they have for SMEs, but do it through channels as well as the pillar banks but we can do it very good do, yeah. you know, through, through all our different technology platforms and um, a whole lot quicker because right now you just we just need to get the money out to companies we want to keep the doors open so that when we do come out the other side people are employed companies are open and we're able to we're not going to go click our fingers and it be back to normal straight overnight but that we're able to ramp that up and not slow it down in any way yeah no absolutely i mean <laughs> I'm speaking to my customers on a daily basis and like these jobs haven't gone away. I mean, a lot of these guys are, are mid project and there will be an impact on the cash flow that they needed to yeah. get that project over the line. So, I mean, I'd imagine that could be a, a solid option. Uh, how can companies find out more about Flender? Uh, the, the best way, obviously, is go to uh, flender.ie. Um, you can find us on uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter as well. Um, we're, 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 we're somewhat active on them. Um, and look, it, like I said, the process of applying is very, very quick, very easy. We, we videos, um, that you can check out, um, on our YouTube channel as well, that it kind of explained the process pretty quickly. Um, and, and like I said, I'm not trying to like I'm not involved in sales or anything like that. I just I just like the idea of like this, the, the idea of me getting involved with Flendery actually came about from the pubs, funny enough, where we um, were looking to buy a building right beside our, the first pub that we bought. And we so we bought the pub anyway, and we're trying to do it up, the, the building that we bought. And um, 
we were finding it. It was taking so if we went through the process because there was no alternative process for us to go through. But it took us so long to get answers off the off the off the bank and go through the process and actually get a yes and get the money that we nearly lost um, the ability to do it. And I was afterwards, I was like, okay, going forward, there's got to be a better alternative here. So I, I started looking about and um, came across different ones. There's like, there's Flender, obviously, there's uh, Linked Finance, there's Grid Finance, there's uh, Granka, there's all sorts of different alternative finance partners out there. And um, I came across them, started working with them, working as a brand ambassador with them and, and partnered up basically uh, with them. And uh, I've had the opportunity to spend a bit more time over 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 the last few months. And, and um, you know, what we've been trying to do is obviously just highlight that fact that there is alternatives. And, um, you know, I think prior to, to this uh, COVID-19 crisis, you know, we, we had had our biggest month ever in um in January, in terms of uh, originations, and um, you know, obviously March is probably taking a hit, but uh, like everyone else, but we are seeing uh, demand is as it's funny. We're seeing demand is is as high as ever in terms of applications coming through, yeah. um, and and also on the retail lending side, um, it's actually been as busy as it's ever been because I, I I think people see a way of using our credit checks in that, being able to help SMEs who are looking for, for working capital uh, kind of loans or whatever the loan is for, but helping them through our platform. Yeah, oh, super. Uh, Jamie, we're, we're very close to our time. Listen, you didn't get the, the send off you deserved in an Irish short, I, my, my opinion. Um, <laughs> You're too kind. But you have given us some, some great memories. I mean, I had a, just had a quick look back there yesterday and it actually shocked me. As I touched on, I spent nine years off in Australia, so I didn't get to see much of the, the Leinster stuff. We just got to see the sort of big European games. But when I look back, like three Heineken Cups, 12 Pro 12, or yeah, sorry, three Pro 12s, one European Cup, um, three Six Nations, two Triple Crowns, one Grand Slam, and then, of course, the two Lions Tours with one series win. I mean, if your business career is anything as successful as that, yeah. you're, you're going to be okay. I can tell you that. Um, listen, thanks very much. We do appreciate any bit of help we can get out to our, our guys through this time is really appreciated. So I can't thank you enough for, 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 for giving yeah, us your time. Yeah, and I, I think, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, construction was really, you know, SMEs, sorry, in general are like the, the, like the beating heart of this economy. I think the construction industry was, you know, playing a big role in that. Uh, prior to this and, and and we want to be able to help um companies through this period right now so that we come out the other side we can get that going again yeah no super jamie thanks very much I appreciate your time no worries take care